Hi! In this video, I'm going to show you some Excel tricks which are very useful in data analysis. So if you are just starting out with Excel and you're wondering what you can do to be more efficient, you've come to the right place. We'll go from the basic to the more tricky ones. So let's get started. You can easily count entries in the spreadsheet by simply selecting all of them. Each time you select cells in Excel, at the bottom right corner, you'll find a value labeled count. That is the number of known empty cells which corresponds to the number of entries you are looking for. The sum and average or arithmetic mean are the most common aggregates used. If you select cells with only numerical values, Excel displays three results at the bottom right corner. In addition to the number of entries or count value, it also gives the sum and average of all the numbers selected as you can see. If the selection includes alphanumeric entries, then it displays the sum and average of only the numeric entries but the count of all of them. In this example, we have 8 entries in total, but Excel displays the sum and average of the 5 numeric entries which are 41 and 8.2 respectively. Sum, average and count can be used rapidly in case you need quick aggregates of a few entries. However, if you have so much data, using functions will be more efficient. What if you need to count entries that respect a specific condition? In other words, a subset of all the entries. Let's say you need to determine the number of entries with yes. Given how scattered they are in this list, it would take a lot of time to count them by selection. Luckily, we have the count if function at our service for that. It takes two arguments, the range of cells containing all the entries and the condition. In this case, the condition will be the text yes in quotes, which gives us the expected result. Conditions can be as simple as this one or even more complex. This trick is used to create a sequential list of entries, often numbers, starting from any point. Say 1 to 100, 40 to 90, and so on. To do this, simply enter the first number, then on the cell immediately below it, enter a formula which adds 1 to the value of the previous cell. Then you can just hold the bottom right corner of that cell and pull. This will automatically increment each value till the limit of your choosing. You can also generate a sequential list of alphanumeric entries in a similar manner. The difference here is you don't need a formula since it has both characters and numbers. Pulling down the first value will automatically increment the numerical path. This is useful when you need alphanumeric identifiers for example. Now, what if you want to use a section of those entries somewhere else? If you simply copy and paste, it won't work because they were generated using a formula. So what you need here is to use the special paste function. You copy or Ctrl plus C, then right click where you want to paste and select paste values. That is the small icon with 1, 2, 3 under. It will extract only the values of the cells independent of the formulae. Once you apply any formula to obtain a result, you need to use this function to duplicate it. Another special paste technique that's very helpful is transposing. That is, converting rows to columns and vice versa. Select and copy the cells and go to where you want to paste them and right click. Then check transpose which is at the bottom right and click OK. It is very practical and works with any table or matrix size of cells. Sorting is something which you certainly need to do each time you are analyzing data. It can be done in increasing or decreasing order. In case of a single column, simply select your data, then click the data tab. Proceed by clicking either the A to Z or Z to A icon to sort in increasing or decreasing order respectively. A more common case is when you have multiple columns with related entries in rows. Meaning, if you sort a column independently, the data will become inconsistent. In fact, you'll get a warning when you are about doing that. 
so it's advisable to expand the selection to maintain consistency. Since Excel sorts from left to right, place the column of interest on the extreme left first, then select all the data across columns and do same as above to sort either in ascending or descending order. This will have as result to sort all the columns following the order of the first column. You can proceed that way to sort the next column on the right, then the next until you are satisfied with the result. Freezing panes comes in handy when you need to look through a large data set. Let's see it in action. You can freeze the top row, first column or any specific section. To freeze the top row, go to the view tab and click on freeze panes, which reveals three options. Click freeze top row or freeze first column to freeze the top row or first column respectively. This will keep them static while scrolling through, thus preventing you from going back to the beginning to determine what each entry represents. What if you want to freeze both? Simply select the cell at the right angle formed between them, then click freeze panes. You can increase the number of rows and columns by selecting cells further down on the same diagonal. To freeze only multiple rows, Select the cell immediately below the desired number of rows and on the first column and click Freeze Panes. Similarly, to freeze only multiple columns, select the cell immediately to the right of the desired number of columns and on the first row. Indeed, the flexibility of this feature goes beyond just freezing single rows or columns. If your data is voluminous and you need to analyze portions, you can filter it based on the column or across multiple columns. To add a filter, select the column or columns on which you want to filter data and go to the data tab. Then click filter. From there, you can filter the entries based on specific categories. Click on the arrow and check the categories of interest and click OK. That way, you can view only the faculty members or students based on our example. To clear the filter, click again on the arrow, select all and validate. With filtering, you can extract just the portion of data you need and put on a new spreadsheet to perform further analysis. What if there are duplicates in your data? You can eliminate them, of course. Start by identifying all duplicates. Select all the entries and go to conditional formatting under the Home tab. When you click on it, a drop-down menu appears. Hover the mouse over the first item, highlight cells rules to display a sub-menu. Right below that menu is duplicate values. After clicking on it, a dialog box opens for you to specify the format of the duplicate values. You can pick any one, but we'll stick with the default, fill duplicate with light red. This immediately colors all the duplicate values. To delete them easily, apply a filter on the cells and filter by colors. Choose light red. You can now select all the rows and delete them. Just like that and you are done. So that's all folks. 10 essential tips as you get started with data analysis using Excel. Hope they are beneficial to you. To get frequent updates and fresh tips, subscribe. Feel free to drop any comments or remarks you have and please do like and share. Thanks and stay tuned.